By popular demand, people wanted to do something in Gloucester and Gloucestershire. So we've got lots more of these bags to hand out still, both at the cross and here. And to make the statement that here we are two years to the day after the EU referendum, and really with the dilly-dallying of Theresa May and the weakness of the Conservative government, very, very little has happened to progress in the last two years. Um, David Cameron said that if we voted to leave on the Thursday, he'd trigger Article 50 on the, on, the, on the Monday. And of course that hasn't happened and we're being threatened, bullied, scaremongered, um, all the rest has happened in the period of the referendum. But what I want to do really, and thank you for coming here to Gloucester, uh, to make the statement, Gloucester voted leave, uh, Gloucestershire voted leave, and the UK voted leave, and nothing has happened yet. So we've got three speakers here. The first one is only Rwanda, very privileged to have, who's the national spokesman for small business. And I think he's an entrepreneur and a successful businessman himself. Give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. Right, thanks ever so much, everybody. Um, and it is a good turnout. It's funny, this morning I thought, I wonder what I'm going to say to all these people, because, you know, we voted out, whichever way you look at it, 17.2 versus 16.1, 52 versus 48, 8% more, but apparently the Remainers still can't work it out, because they can only count to 20. <laughs> I don't know why. And they called us thick. Um, and then I listened to the radio, and then we have the People's Party marching in London, headed up by Chuka Amuna, whose lovely multi-million pound Streatham house is allegedly owned by a tax haven company in Guernsey, and funded by George Soros. There's a cracking chap. There's a cracker. I thought all we need is Tony Blair to turn up. But then someone did say we'd eradicated TB from the country, so I live in hope. I then listened to Airbus. And funnily enough, I had a chap come here who actually works down at Filton. And Airbus, before the referendum, were all over the referendum saying, oh, if we vote leave, it's the end of the world, Airbus will have to explode. And then during the referendum, the chief executive of Airbus said, actually, it won't have any effect. We can't, we'll stay on manufacturing, all the skills of that are here. And now suddenly they're leaving again to go to other parts of the EU, like China and America, which... <laughs> I did look up, and it must be a very, very late deal, because I thought they weren't in the EU. And in fact, furthermore, I thought they were having a trade war and a tariff war with the EU. We voted leave. We have to keep doing this. I'm so grateful to you for turning out. I really am, because 72% of your members of parliament are Remain. 90, absolutely. 95% of the House of Lords Remain. The Parliamentary Brexit Committee has been rechristened the Parliamentary Remain Committee because it's 14 seven Remainers. And you can't put Brits in a corner. We won't have it. We won't have it. I'm going to make a very small party political point here. There was a very famous French philosopher in 1860 said that nations get the governments they richly deserve. What the hell have we done? How naughty have we been? Next time, please tick the purple box. Please, we're the only party that actually believes in Brexit 100%. Thank you so much for turning out. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Can you all hear me OK? Yeah. People at the back? What did you say? <laughs> we have, my friends, seen a complete betrayal of the the people never witnessed before in our so-called democracy. At every stage of the process, there has been lies and negative assumptions made to try and discredit Brexit and the willful obstruction of the democratic decision taken by the majority of the people of this fair isle of ours. First, we saw the deception and the scaremongering by people on the Remain side in a vain attempt to get their own way. The amendments put forward by the Lords can only be seen as an extension of this obstruction and they only add to continue to the delay of the process. At the beginning, David Cameron stated, if the country votes to leave, then we leave the customs union and we leave the single market. Two of the amendments contradicted this and would have forced us, would have forced us into a situation where we would be tied to the EU on trade, unable to strike our own trade deals. 
there was a theme running through these amendments that would have kept us tethered in one way or the other to the EU or in close alignment with them. My view is that they want us to stay as close to the EU as possible so that at some point in the future they can turn around our decision. Make no mistake by believing this Remain supporting Prime Minister has the guts and determination to push through the complete exit from the EU by the UK. During the referendum, the mantra was to take back control. The amendments put forward put this on the back foot and we see that the amendments the EU to EU retained laws cannot be changed without further scrutiny. We must, as a sovereign nation, be able to make our own laws and decide the direction of travel. We have been a seafaring trading nation since the Bronze Age, so we must be able to trade with all nations worldwide. The EU complained that the US are becoming more protectionist as a nation, but I wish to interject and say the EU show they are the worst and should look in their own backyard. They charge immoral tariffs on the poorest countries outside the EU27 who produce crop crops and then the EU export the processed goods at highly inflated prices, keeping the poorer nations in poverty. By making the option of keeping the UK in the EEA as part of the ne negotiations, this really ties one hand of the negotiators behind their back. A free trade deal is the only viable and acceptable way forward. We should be saying to the EU that we will be taking the payment off the table and trading on WTO rules up to a point that the EU will come to us and agree a free trade deal with no strings attached. I urge you, my friends and my colleagues, to keep up that fight and campaign at every opportunity you have. I have a burning in my heart that this great nation of ours will rise up and have an economy to the envy of the world, a nation that has people who believe in its values, that respect and abide our laws. I know we can achieve this with the determination of heart and will. Thank you. The parliamentary candidate for Stroud for UKIP were adopting six candidates for all six Gloucestershire seats. Um, and three South Gloucestershire seats. We're going to be fighting the next election when it comes and we're going to be the only Brexit party in Gloucester, in Stroud, in the Forest of Dean, in the Cotswolds, everywhere in this county. The only party for Brexit and Cheltenham, of course, yeah. We're the only party. So, well, how do it comes under Stroud in the parliamentary? So I'd like to introduce, I'm very fortunate to have Simon here, Simon Richards, the Chief Chairman and Chief Executive of the Freedom Association, which is based down in London and in Cheltenham as well. And he's agreed, it's his birthday today, so can we have a round of applause? He's, he, he, he's 23 today, he's had a bit of a hard life. Thank you, Simon. Richard. Thank you, Richard, I wish. Now, I'll never forget my birthday two years ago. It was the greatest day in this country's history since the end of the Second World War. And it was your victory. And I'm very proud to be here in the, in the wonderful city of Gloucester, which, like the UK as a whole, voted for Brexit, voted for freedom, voted for independence for this country. Now, did the politicians support that? No. Did big business support that? No. Did the multinational corporations support that? No. Did the then now defeated President of the United States support that? No. This was a victory of the British people against the establishment. And you deserve the applause. Give yourself a good round of applause. I was fortunate enough, the morning after that great day, June the 23rd, 2016, to be in Whitehall. I walked down towards Downing Street, and we had our Brexit Union Jacks with us, and I was nearly moved to tears by the response that I received. Because every black cab, every white van, 
and in particular all the dustbin uh, fans which were out, it was early in the morning, they all cheered us to the echo, they waved, they hooted their horns. Uh, but the limo drivers, they didn't. The people in the posh cars, the BMWs, dare I say, uh, no, no offence to any BMW owners here, but it was, that was a sign that it was the British people versus the establishment. And if we now allow the establishment to stop Brexit, to prevent us having the independence that countries all around the world, our former colonies, enjoy, if they do that, then that is the death of democracy in this country. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for what you've done. Thank you to the British people. And, and stay firm and demand the Brexit that you voted for. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know whether any of you had time to see the news this morning, but the usual BBC anti-Brexit bias was rampant. They mentioned all about the Remainers wanting to leave, They'd no mention whatsoever of the big pro-Brexit march that's taking place. But have you noticed on the BBC, they're very fond of showing a poster with someone holding up a placard saying, I'm 15. Brexit has stolen my future. What a load of rubbish! We're fighting for the future of the young people. And what I'd say to the young people is, don't worry about Brexit. Look on it as you're leaving home. Look on it, you're going out into the wide world, into your own future. No longer will you be just the son or daughter of your parents. You will be your own people. That's what Brexit is like. No, you won't cut off all ties with your parents. Of course you won't. But you will make your own future. You will fight for your own future. It's exciting. Life outside the EU is going to be great. Thank you. John um, has got a petition about the BBC. Now, the BBC is taking all of your money. If you don't have a licence, they get very aggressive as to why you haven't got a licence and all the rest of it. Yep. John has got a petition which he'd like you to sign to have a debate in Parliament about the BBC. So, uh, so yeah, Well, to have a debate in Parliament about having a referendum to take the licence fee away from the BBC to give choice. So here's John and he's got his petition. This, this guy here, gentleman with the cap on. Th Firstly, we've got uh, at the Turk's Head, which is in Southgate Street, just down here. We've got a brew called Brexit Beer and Brexit Cider. So if you'd like to go down to the Turk's Head, it's real, real ale, cider, whatever. We've also got the uh, Café Rennie and the Fountain, all pubs owned by people that do support us. I was concerned because there's a big thing going on in London today and, you know, that shows the strength of feeling. As many new faces I see here, so many people think they voted two years ago. What the heck is happening? But I'd like to thank all of our speakers today who've come down. I'd like to thank you for coming and enjoy the glorious city of Gloucester. For, for those of you who are not from Gloucester, the cathedral is down that way. Beautiful medieval cathedral, great pubs, good shops. And Gloucester Docks is about a 10 minutes walk that direction, been refurbished most inland waterway in, been refurbished over the last several years. So please enjoy Gloucester. Thank you for coming. And let's not let them get away with it. Let's hold the government to account. We voted one way. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And please take some of these bags. Take as many as you want. Give them to your friends, your family, your girlfriend, whoever. Take them free. There are four quid each in Waitrose.